Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie, and this is your November 2021 Tarot Scope. So I want to start off first by saying that according to numerologist.com, the month of November is really about introspection. It's really about us looking at ourselves and why are we here? Um, what's our purpose? Are we following actions and doing things that align us with expansion, that align us with growth and abundance? Or are we doing things that block us and prevent us from experiencing life you know, on a level that we truly desire. So that being said, uh, this month I've decided to feature the Starseed Oracle and the Work Your Light deck. These, both of these Oracle decks are, uh, hold a special place in my heart. And I definitely feel like they do deliver these messages that are deep and come from our soul. And I feel like, uh, a lot of times they expose things in readings that, aren't, aren't, act, or they're not surface level, you know, so sometimes they're a little bit harder to take, um, the messages that come through, but I feel like it's essentially kind of that soul speak coming out, right? So we'll be doing a three card spread where, where we will look at the beginning, middle, and end of the month for you, Sag, and let's jump right in and see what we got, yeah? So please, universe, spirits, guides, angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves, what can you tell me about the beginning of November 2021 for Sagittarius? What can you tell me? That's too many. What can you tell me about the beginning of November 2021? Okay, thank you. You got the love, Hadarian energy, codependency, boundaries. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of the cards out and then we'll go through them and dive deeper into each one individually. And what please can you tell me about the middle of November 2021 for Sagittarius? What about the middle of November? Okay. <laughs> so I take jumpers, guys, and most of the time... Uh, the jumpers that I take are face up unless they land out by themselves and are face down. So in this case, we did have a card fall out on the table, but the one in my hand, as you can see, is flipped up, which will be the one that I take. I do that intuitively also. I, I What cards come out that I take is, is all intuitive as well. So uh, the middle of the month, we have karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. And what about the end of November? What can you tell me about the end of November 2021 for Sagittarius? What can you tell me about the end of... Too many? What can you tell me about the end of November 2021 for Sagittarius, please? Oh my gosh, that's too many. It's the end of... I don't know. The end of the month may, may be a little chaotic for you, Sag. Let's try that again. What can you tell me about the end of November 2021 for Sagittarius? That's too many. The end of November 2021 for Sagittarius. What can you tell me about the end of the month? Thank you. Your life is a canvas, artist, manifestation, creative accountability. Okay. What's beneath the surface, bottom of the deck, star family, you're part of a team of souls, call in support. Okay. I'm going to get out clarifiers. I feel like I need them right now. Um, I haven't necessarily felt like I've needed them for every reading, but for this one, I do feel like we may need to call up on them for a little bit of assistance, clarifying uh, what's going on here. I do want to share with you, Sag, that in the beginning of the month, you have this You Got the Love card, uh, Hadarian Energy Codependency Boundaries. And I want to share that this is a card that's come through in several readings, okay? It, it seems to be what, um, an energy that we're focusing on as a collective for the month of November. Um, it's come up in my some of my weekly readings or or 
uh, daily readings more predominantly and some of the other signs as well. So this energy is really about showing ourselves the same unconditional love that we would show to other people, um, giving ourselves some of the love that we give to other people, right? And really, and really um, seeing ourselves as deserving of that, right? Uh, seeing ourselves as of value and showing. And I think too, Sag, it's like, um, oftentimes when we talk about creating boundaries, it comes up to those that we're expressing that need to as, you know, as being like selfish, right? Um, you know, oh, I think I'm going to step back and take some time away from you. I think we just need some space, right? Uh, some people get really triggered by that, find that very unnerving, right? And uh, I want to share with you that boundaries, creating boundaries for yourself is such a high act of self-love. Um, you know, it's really like, okay, look, I love you and I care about you. My setting up boundaries doesn't mean that I don't care. It doesn't mean that I don't uh, have love for you. What it means is that I love myself as well. And there are certain times, certain things that I need to do to take care of myself and show myself that love to honor myself in that way. Right. And so I just want to share with you that if you feel the need or if you notice spaces or situations, relationships where you have, you know, a bit of codependency, where you're, you know, feel like you may be people pleasing and just kind of pouring and pouring and pouring into the cups of others without giving back to yourself. It is not selfish for you to look at those situations and establish boundaries. I mean, you cannot pour from an empty cup, Sagittarius. You just can't do it. And so, you know, that love for yourself, you express that by setting up those boundaries. Like, look, I still have to have things left over for myself. I still have to have energy left over for myself. I still have to have love for myself. I can give, but I need to be able to give to me as well. So just want to share with you that that has been coming up repeatedly in the readings. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this, that is your story, Sagittarius, but I just wanted to share that it has made quite the appearance. All right, let's get out some clarifiers so we can really figure out, you know, maybe um, where this, where this need for, you know, codependency or excuse me, for boundaries uh, due to codependency are needed or, you know, and, and clarify the rest of the cards as well. So what can you tell me, please, about Sagittarius in November needing to create some boundaries and show themselves some, some unconditional love? What can you tell me? Why, why, uh, why is this here? Thank you. Uh, Am I meant to take this card? Yeah. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I might have to draw another one because I don't really know how this is going to play out, but clarifying you got the love is the leap. You go first, the universe will catch you. Now, oh, okay. This is really, really interesting energy, Sagittarius, because I felt like I just had a whole buku, big, large file of information just drop into my awareness for you. So here I am, I'm sitting in this leap card. I'm like, how is this going to relate to this codependency and like need for boundaries? How does it, what is going on here? Here's the reality. In the beginning of the month, I'm just going to, I'm going to jump into the book real quick because you guys, I feel like this, um, <laughs> your reading is interesting and, I, and it's, and this whole thing just played out in front of my eyes. It just like, this is what this is. This is what, this is what this is. This is what this is. Boom, boom, boom. They're all related. It all flows every, uh, every aspect of the month for you, um, in this particular reading. So with Hadarian energy, 
I want to share this with you. It says, the Hadarians are believed to be beacons of pure, divine, unconditional love who see love in all people and situations. As a result, they can find it hard to have boundary, boundaried, such an interesting word, boundaried, interdependent, healthy relationships because they only see the unconditional nature of those they meet. The lovers of the cosmos, they dive in fast. They're here to learn how to love while in a separate body, to learn to love self first and then establish healthy relationships with others, to remember that the love they seek is already within them that they truly do have the love all on their own. The message of this card is to review the ways you may need to establish healthier boundaries. Perhaps you're in a codependent relationship in which you may be losing your sense of self. It's common for starseeds to dive deep into relationships, particularly with those who feel safe and familiar at a soul level. Perhaps you're in a relationship in which you give more than you receive, or perhaps there's a certain, uh, okay, sorry, I, I lost my, my place. I'm very sorry, guys. Or perhaps there's a certain, um, uh, volatility to it, and you're always unsure where you stand. This card is a sign to do a relationship review and see what energetic agreements you've made consciously or unconsciously. To acknowledge if there are relationships in which you feel anxious or powerless, in which you don't feel like it's safe to relax and just be you. To assess if there are any places of, ina of inadequacy that you've used a relationship to soothe and cover up. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull more cards on, on, to clarify the remaining two cards for the middle and end of the month. But before I do that, I want to share, I, you know, read that but for a reason and want to share with you, um, how this is, this is looking the energy that's come through and the, what I just had dropped in. So it seems to me, Sagittarius in the beginning of the month, you have this, it's almost as if you come into this awareness of where boundaries may need to be drawn. Uh, more oftentimes than not, we don't notice our own codependency. Okay. Um, it takes a lot of self-awareness in order to be able to do that. But something may have happened where you have, you may have felt like, mm, maybe I shouldn't hang out with that person as much anymore. You know, or maybe like, or maybe you are kind of like, we're just not seeing eye to eye. Like it's so strange lately, right? Or maybe you've felt that energetic shift where, um, you, you know, are feeling powerless all of a sudden in a relationship or feeling, you know, undervalued or, um, where you're giving more than you're receiving that sort of thing. Maybe this came into your awareness, right? And there's perhaps been this internal evaluation where you're like, mm, maybe I shouldn't be in a relationship with this person. Maybe I shouldn't um, continue to give my energy to this situation. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is romantic. It can definitely be, you know, a family type of situation. It can definitely be, you know, coworkers. It can definitely be various different types of relationships where you've um, started or, or created this codependency or, you know, this people pleasing type of, of situation. Now, again, that could have come into your awareness and you may have been feeling like, oh, maybe I should step back or, or find a different relationship or things like this. If that is true for you, okay, if that resonates with you, the universe is saying, do it. You go first, I'll catch you. There's, you know, don't be afraid of establishing those boundaries, right? And here's the thing. When you establish boundaries, Sagittarius, those who reject those boundaries, those who fight them, question them. And I don't mean question as in, 
um, genuinely being curious as to why you're establishing them, like, you know, questioning them in the sense of like, is there something I can do to make you feel like you don't feel undervalued or, you know, things like that, but more questioning and making you feel like you're, how do I word this? Uh, making you feel like your need for boundaries is, is unfounded right? Um, like there's no grounds for you to create these boundaries, right? If they start to question that, it is likely because they are the reason why you need them. Okay. A narcissist can like, it seriously disturbs a narcissist to have that, that pawn that they've been using establish boundaries, right? It's, it's, because they can no longer manipulate or utilize those energies for themselves. Okay. So I just want to share that with you now. Moving forward, the middle of the month, we have karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. And here's what I, what I got dropped into my field. In the beginning of the month, it's like, okay, maybe I need boundaries here. Maybe I need to not be in that relationship with that person or that situation why you're being shown right these karmic relationships if you are feeling called to develop boundaries it may very well be because the relationship is karmic it is meant to teach you a lesson and potentially just not that be it right it is meant to put you in a situation where you're challenged to grow, where, you know, conflict arises and you're challenged to work through that and to come out the other side more knowledgeable, more aware, right? Expanded. So I get the feeling here that this thing that kind of shows up in the beginning of the month where you start to question things, right? I feel like it, it continues to the middle of the month, right? And I feel like, let me look at the book because I want to touch, I think it's interesting, Sagittarius, that you have Hadarian energy and Orion energy coming through. So, you know, there's these different influences. Um, let me just look here and see what exactly this Orion energy is about. I've had these cards for a very long time. I mean, not very long. That's kind of a lie. Um, it's been about a year though. And I've, but I've become very acquainted. Maybe that's a better way to put it with these cards. And, and I really do, um, love them and have, you know, experience with them. But, uh, for quite a while I backed up and started working on developing my tarot card reading skills. And so I haven't, um, used, used these cards for readings in a little while. Uh, so I'm just going to fresh, refresh my memory. Uh, but I almost, I feel the need, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. Um, I don't know why I feel called to, let, let's see here. Maybe there's a specific message in here for someone. So it says here, the constellation Orion is thought by many to have been a place of great polarity and eventual unity. Some believe that many star seeds who are part of this cosmic history are incarnate on earth now and are playing out karmic relationships from Orion times. Perhaps you're one of them. Polarity causes conflict and highlights separation. However, because of this, because of this, conflict can also result in unity and growth. Too many misunderstandings are caused when we don't open our heart and mind and see things from a different point of view. When we go into reactive, second-guessing mode instead of gathering the courage to open our heart, we should admit that we may have reacted because of our own woundings and then find mutual ground. We are all innocent children looking to be seen understood and cherished. It's much harder to grow closer through conflict than it is to grow further apart. And yet that's the invitation of conflict. It's easy to react and take things personally. It's more challenging to see the innocence of all involved and find a way to grow closer through conflict. It's through relationships that we grow the most. How can you soften your heart and drop your defenses enough to see things from a different point of view? 
How can you see the innocence of all involved? How can you learn to see the similarities rather than the differences? So, you know, here's the thing. When we're, again, when we're put in these situations of, of conflict, right? Um, we're, we're put in this, put in these situations of growth simultaneously, right? They, they can be conflicting, but give us the opportunity, opportunity, excuse me, to grow. And right now, I feel like whatever this situation is where you, these, this need for boundaries may be being brought to the forefront, right? The beginning of November, that it may be, be the conflict or that need rather for the boundaries is due to, um, this, these karmic relationships, right? Um, these may be being played out for you currently, and there may be an opportunity for you to experience or rather, uh, yeah, experience growth and to find common ground and be able to unify or, or, you know, come into union with those who this conflict is being presented right now, this may be the course of action that you take. That doesn't necessarily mean that the other and the party involved is going to be receptive of that, right? It doesn't mean that, that through this conflict, they will also come to a space of wanting unity right? Um, we all grow at our own pace. We all have our own things to learn and, you know, free will is always involved. So that being said, you know, um, you may find it within yourself to be able to navigate the conflict and respond versus being reactive and come out the other side, you know, um, changed and, and expanded, you know, you may perhaps grow through it, right? Um, and, but the other person may not, and that's okay, right? We're not responsible for anyone else. We're only responsible for ourselves. And even if you don't experience the gratification on the other end of it, it could still be beneficial for you, right? Because even though the relationship may not grow, you may find growth on your own. Okay. But um, and then here's what's interesting again. So let's carry on, right? The end of the month, we have your life as a canvas artist manifestation, creative accountability. Now, how I saw this playing out. Okay. Is here's the thing. And this, this, I'm sharing something from my own experience. Um, I'm not a Sagittarius. I don't think right off the top of my head, I don't know that I have any Sagittarius in my chart. I might have one placement perhaps in my, um, natal chart. Uh, I do have a lot of fire, but I'm not a Sagittarius. However, in my experience, so I went through this growth, right? Where I recognized the need for boundaries because I was essentially forfeiting my own life to please others. Okay. Now that being said, how that played out is there was conflict involved in that because I need, um, discovered the need for boundaries. Conflict arose between myself and those individuals due to that, uh, feeling from me for a need of boundaries, right? They, may have grown. I haven't spoken to these individuals in quite some time. Um, the relationship did not, uh, survive, but I grew tremendously from it. And through that growth, through this, these understandings, through allowing myself to be receptive of the truth, right? No matter what that looked like. Okay. I discovered that through my desire to people, please, to, to, which comes from a fear of abandonment and rejection, by the way, my need to people, please, and to pour, to keep pouring and giving and giving and giving, seeing that, uh, that, you know, love and all and others. I was not living for myself, right? I was giving and giving and not 
keeping anything for myself. I wasn't giving back to myself in any way, shape or form. Right. And if I was, it was very minuscule and it was, I mean, and then ultimately, you know, I was found myself in my early thirties, like where the fuck is my life gone? Because I wasn't living it for me. Okay. So that being said, I come out the other side, recognizing that I create my life. And for the longest time, did not take accountability for that, right? I was emptying my cup to help satisfy the lives of other people and not creating my own satisfaction, my own life, right? So it led me to have to acknowledge that. And I feel like this is what has played out here for you, Sagittarius, if this is relevant for you. Now I'm going to get the clarifiers to get a little bit deeper on that, right? Because just because this is how my situation played out, that does not mean that that's how yours will play out. Okay. Um, I'm just sharing that with you so that, you know, it gives you a thread of how this could play out in your own reality. So um, please, universe, spirits, guides, angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves. What can you tell me about these karmic relationships showing up in the middle of November for Sagittarius? What is this polarity and growth? Where is this conflict coming from? And, and how, what do we need to know, please? What can you tell me about Sagittarius's karmic relationships in the middle of November 2021. Did you see that? How they turned over and then turned back over? <laughs> like those are not it. Too many, too many. What can you tell me about Sagittarius's karmic relationships here in the middle of November 2021, please? What do we need to know for the middle of thank you? Am I meant to take both of these? Okay, very well. Uh, so what's fascinating here, you guys, uh, we do have here karmic relationships. And if you remember me reading it, karmic relationships are things that we carry um, that are running on like a cycle, right? From past lives, we bring them into this life or, you know, we, ex we do things in this life that creates um, these karmic relationships and then we have to grow through them in this life. So, you know, it can be cycles running from past lives. It can also be cycles running from karma we've created in this life. Now, what's fascinating is clarifying this card is unbound, releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. So here's the thing, guys. <laughs> whether or not this, whatever the situation is for you, plays out to a point where you find uni unity with the other parties involved, whether or not you find unity, this is happening for you to be able to grow and release what is not serving you so that you can stop playing these cycles out over and over and over again, because they will repeat until you break the cycle. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I, I feel like it doesn't really get any more black and white than that. I don't feel like I necessarily need to delve into that card anymore. Um, the only other thing I do want to point out is that there is what appears to be a full moon in this card. And it just so happens that in the middle of November, we have a full moon lunar eclipse, excuse me, a full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus on November 19th. Right. So what that means is, um, according to numerologist.com, it's a powerful day of manifestation in the realms of love, money and luxury. OK, so I just I find that interesting. I also find it interesting that there's a full moon in the leap card that has come out for the beginning of the month as well. So I think this full moon may have some some pretty interesting effects on you. Uh, Sagittarius, that may be something to look for, look, look to, uh, to look closer at rather. Now, what's interesting is you had two cards come out and, and when I asked, am I meant to take them both? I got a yes. So the other card that you have here is get grounded empaths, highly sensitives connect with nature. Now, what I find fascinating about this is 
that <laughs> more often than not, empaths tend to find themselves at some point in their life in a narcissistic relationship. Okay. That's because as empaths, we sit in that love, that unconditional love, and that desire to show others compassion and understanding. And because we feel everything that they experience, right? We tend to feel it so deeply. So we want, so we tend to be, you know, super compassionate. But here's the problem with that. Narcissists are essentially, you know, the ones who continuously have a straw in the cup and are continuously drinking all everything that you are out of your cup all the time, right? And that can be detrimental to you because you're, you don't leave anything for yourself. You don't give anything to yourself and then you lose who you are and you suffer because of it. Your soul suffers, right? And so here's the thing. We have... I feel that, first of all, if this is describing a situation that you are aware of, or it sounds like you, maybe, you know, this empath in a narcissistic relationship where, and, and you know, feel free to do the research uh, to look up the, the dynamics and how that plays out, what that looks like, right? So that you can better identify if it is your story or not feel free to do that. But, you know, I feel like if this is your thing, this may be your sign that it is time to let that thing, that relationship go because it's not serving you, right? As much as this says get grounded and, and you know, when I think of get grounded, it, it really, it's about uh, coming back to a now moment, right? Being in the present. Uh, but, more than anything, I'm seeing the, the empath and or empaths, excuse me, I'm trying to get it to focus there and highly sensitives part is what's standing out most to me right now. And that's where I, that's where that narcissistic, you know, um, example, narcissistic empath relationship dynamic example came from, because I feel like Sagittarius, if you're listening, listening to this, you may be one of those empaths, one of those highly sensitive people who really just gives, right? Because we do have the Hadarian energy here as well. So it's like, we're, we're being told the same message repeatedly, right? And I feel like, um, if you're in a relationship with that narcissistic empath dynamic, it may be a very, very good time to truly, truly examine that relationship and to perhaps if, you know, it feels right for you to let go of that, to break that, to walk away from it, to release yourself. Right. Um, and, 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 I, and I don't think that it would be a bad idea to connect with nature. Um, you know, even though that's not necessarily standing out in this card for me, I feel like there, you can't go wrong really, you know, getting out in nature and connecting with nature. So, you know, you may find answers spending some alone time in nature. Um, for us in where I reside in the state of Michigan, hunting season uh, starts here, I think today maybe, or started recently. And so, you know, the middle of the month, which is when this is being filmed in real time, uh, you know, for Scorpio came through as get out in nature as well, right? And so maybe that's a way that you can spend some time to yourself. Uh, if not, you know, perhaps there are other, other things that you can do to reconnect with nature, perhaps go for a walk or something along those lines. All right. So for the end of the month, what can you tell me about this need for creative accountability from Sagittarius in the uh, end of November, 2021? What is uh, this manifestation and, and creating our, our life and, and our life be, being a canvas, what is going on here for Sagittarius? What do they need to know, please? What do they need to know? Thank you. Transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level. Deep healing. Yeah. 
I mean, here's the thing, <laughs> you know, I feel like when you go through, you know, if this is, if this is ringing true for you, uh, Sagittarius, when you go through an experience where you discover, um, how you have essentially been allowing yourself to be taken advantage of and, and not been in, um, not really had your own life in your, in your hands, um, that can be, you know, that can be challenging. It's, it can be an incredible moment of awakening and can really trigger some, some incredible healing and transformation, right? So I feel like the fact that we have, you know, um, your life is a canvas and manifestation and creative accountability here at the end of the month for you, I really feel is, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? is sparked this, this, I'm going to start to create my own life, um, mentality. I feel like is sparked by this transformation that's taking place on this deep cellular level that you may not even be aware of. Right. I feel like, um, you know, there may be this, this thing like, Oh, I'm going to create boundaries and this and that. And maybe you start doing that and don't even realize, um, how much healing, uh, takes place when you make those decisions, right? So I feel like you, you're, I mean, I really feel like the end of the month, you know, you, it's, it feels as if you like pivot and it's like for the longest time, I haven't been where I should be. I haven't been um, experiencing what I would like to experience. And I think you'll find that it's, been stolen from you, but you've essentially stolen it from yourself because you've allowed yourself to continue to give and perpetuate this kind of, um, giving, but not receiving relationship or dynamic. Right. And then I feel like, you know, at the end of the month, you kind of come into recognition about that and start to kind of change things that, that make you feel like you are actually, um, putting an effort to, essentially design, you know, your life in the way that you want it to feel, um, and start focusing more on you and, and how you contribute to your own life and what that looks like, you know, and I think these transformations start to take place through that. And I think it sparks this incredibly deep healing within you because, you know, that's huge when you start, uh, taking your, essentially the focus of your light and your love off of someone else and give that same love and light to yourself. Incredible, incredible things happen. Now beneath the surface here at the bottom of the deck. So for the, um, work or excuse me, the star seed Oracle, which is our initial reading up here, we do have, Oh my gosh. Okay, we have star family, but right directly beneath that card is deep cellular healing. I feel like that's universe just confirming, right? Because we have two cards that talk about this deep cellular healing, right? So I feel like it's validation. Like I genuinely feel like beneath the surface, this is going on, even if you don't recognize it. Okay. Now, you have star family. You're part of a team of souls calling support. Now, what I want to share with you is that I feel like, Sag, if you are backing up and creating boundaries, that can be terrifying because you can feel like if I don't adhere to what this person expects of me or, you know, the same, if I don't adhere to the same uh, type of giving that I've been doing in the past, they may never speak to me again. I may lose them forever. Let me share with you, Sagittarius, if that rings true for you, please understand that there are, you still will have support. Okay. Like it's not the end all be all essentially. It's not that you're, you know, you're not going to be alone forever. Um, the more you align with your true authentic self, the more your tribe, your star family will be attracted to you as if by magic, as if, you know, being called by magnet, right? Um, and I feel like if you feel overwhelmed by these boundaries, you know, 
get close or can look to your star family, look to your tribe, look to those people who you do have those healthy, balanced relationships with and, you know, maybe confide in them, look to them for support. If you do decide to create boundaries and, you know, things happen that are, would, you know, be deemed by you as unfavorable, look to those who do support you to help you navigate those emotions and those situations better. Okay. Um, the other thing that <laughs> the bottom of the, the clarifying cards here is you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Now, what this says to me is that you, for some reason, Sag, I get the feeling that you got this nudge or niggle about a certain situation or person, relationship, whatever. And I feel like you've been pondering about it. Like I, I'm seeing it as almost like, um, <laughs> almost like a uh, clothes in a washer or dryer tumbling over one another, right? I'm seeing it as, you know, you may have been kind of mulling this over. Like, do I back up from this person? Do I not? Is this really something I want? Um, you know, or perhaps you have even, had this thought come in your head, like, do I really want to be with this person or in this situation? Right. That, that came out. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, I do. Like almost like convincing yourself that you want to carry on. Right. I feel like this is that card that's saying like, stop overthinking. If you're getting signs that you should not be in these situations anymore, then you probably shouldn't be. Stop overthinking it right? Your intuition knows your truth. Your intuition knows what you need. So, you know, it's guiding you. Keep, keep following that. Listen to that because it is your soul speaking to you, letting you know, like, this is no longer in alignment with us. This no longer serves us. And Sag, I want to lovingly tell you before we wrap this up, that life is cyclic. We go through processes of life or excuse me, of death and rebirth over and over and over again within ourselves, within our environments, within our relationships. It's, it's, it's our jobs. You name it. It's cyclic. Life is cyclic. So understand that if this particular situation dies, okay, it makes room for something else to take its place for a rebirth to take place, a new experience to take place, right? So I wouldn't fear the death of something. Rather, look at it as an opportunity to create space for something better, okay? So this is what I have for you for the month, Sagittarius. I really, really hope that it's been valuable um, to some degree or, you know, perhaps helps you navigate the month of November just a little bit easier than before. I would like to invite you to join me on the Soul Good Facebook page. You can find the links for the Soul Good Facebook page in the description box below, along with a link to the Soul Deep podcast. Um, you can also find on the Soul Good Facebook page information about personal readings. You can also find information about the Soul Good exclusive monthly membership channel on Telegram and much, much more. Please feel free to like and share this video if you feel called to do so. Also subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, take care of your beautiful, beautiful soul, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.